Welcome back, Star Citizens. Buzzkiller here. And for today's video, we're going to be taking a close look at the Aegis Saber to determine if it's worth your hard-earned money and credits to buy or rent this particular vessel. Now, I've done some previous videos on this ship, but as I said, I wanted to wait until Alpha 2.2 went live to give you my full review. Well, now seems like the perfect time to do so, since the Saber is currently on sale at least until the 7th of March. So, let's start off with the stats. The Aegis Saber is billed as a dedicated fighter with some stealth attributes and no cargo capacity. The ship is approximately 26 meters long, 22 meters wide, and 5 meters tall. And with its stock loadout, it weighs in at just under 22,000 kilos. And that's according to the hollow table. Its two TR2 main thrusters can propel the ship to 260 meters per second in SCM, 390 meters per second with afterburner, and up to 760 meters per second in cruise mode. For weapons, the ship comes with four size 3 hardpoints, which are outfitted with two size 3 laser repeaters on the wings and two size 2 gimbaled laser repeaters on the fuselage. It also has two size 2 missile pylons, each carrying three size 2 missiles. And also according to the hollow table, the ship's hull has 4,835 hit points, and the stock shields can absorb up to 4,800 4, points of damage. So how does the Sabre compare with other ships in its class? When it comes down to Arena Commander dominance, up until now it's really been a tale of three kings. The Super Hornet, the Gladius, and the Avenger. The Super Hornet is the defending champion of Arena Commander. Its massive weapon and missile payload combined with heavy armor make it a serious force to be reckoned with. The ship's only downfall is its lack of speed and maneuverability. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the Gladius. It's a smaller, more nimble fighter with a much smaller weapons loadout. The Gladius's biggest advantages are its speed, and above average missile, missile payload. Unfortunately, it's struggling right now in the maneuverability department as it flies like a much heavier ship than it actually is. Somewhere in the middle, though leaning more towards the Gladius side, is the Avenger. While it has a slightly better loadout than the Gladius, it's also much slower and has a pretty weak missile loadout. The Avenger is doing pretty well right now as it currently feels more maneuverable than the Gladius for some reason. The Vanguard also receives an honorable mention, but it doesn't really fit into the same class as the others, and its large size makes it an easy target in the close quarters arena commander style combat that the other ships excel at. But with its increased range, heavy armor, and modular central bay, the Vanguard should really come into its own in the Persistent Universe. And that brings us to the Sabre. The Sabre is a nearly direct competitor to the F7CM Super Hornet. In fact, in the ship's lore, it was actually designed by Aegis as one of the competing contracts to replace the aging F7A Hornet. However, Anvil won the competition with its new F8 Lightning and was awarded the contract. And so Aegis turned to the civilian market which is why we can purchase one today. So, where does the Sabre fall? In terms of maneuverability, the ship is more nimble than the current champ, but it lacks the heavier fighter's armor and firepower. The Sabre counters with a lower signature and a thin radar cross-section. Well, from the front at least. In terms of raw speed, the Sabre falls between the Gladius and Avenger, and easily outclasses the Hornet. The best way to describe the Sabre is it's like a ninja as compared to the Hornet's Brawler. And at nearly the same price to purchase, and likely rent, it's a tough call to make as to which one actually comes out on top. That decision has to come down to pilot preference. Do you want a fast, agile fighter with some stealth capabilities, or do you want a flying tank? Another thing to consider is your controller preferences. The Super Hornet lends itself extremely well to mouse and keyboard users with its default all gimbal layout, while joystick users will be able to wring every bit of performance out of the Sabre with its fixed weapons. Though you can put gimbals on the Sabre, it's really not recommended. The Sabre's gimbals are woefully lacking in their range of motion as compared to the Super Hornet's turret and open wing mounted gimbals. 
And that brings us to the final question. Is the Sabre worth it? And I would have to say, yes. It's a solid dogfighting platform that'll make an excellent mercenary or escort ship. The $170 pledge may seem a bit steep, but the Super Hornet is right behind it at $165. And I think the ship is going to remain one of the top dogs for a long time. When it comes to renting, the Sabre is not actually available in the Electronics Access Store as of yet, but if it follows the pattern of the other ships, it should end up costing you about 17,000 rec per week. Now that's a pretty expensive rent if you're grinding rec, but if you can spare it, I definitely recommend giving it a go. The ship is an absolute joy to fly. And so I think we can wrap up this video by saying that the Aegis Sabre is a great ship that looks as good as it fights. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. It really does keep me motivated. And if you want to see more of my content as it comes available, consider subscribing as well. Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and for my fellow citizens out there, I'll see you in the verse.